Hi there and welcome to this uh, video in City Skylines called Port Corinth. Uh, in this video I'll be showing how I built this city on this custom map I made all by myself. Um, I start here with the preparations. I guess you would know how to do that. Connect some water and electricity. electricity and uh, having a simple road layout. As you can do, see, I minimize stuff to the um, to the extreme almost, and I uh, uh, keep uh, some money in the pocket uh, for construction work. Start of the simulation is of course quite easy. First uh, little hamlet uh, is uh, very easy to reach if you keep uh, things simple, and that's what I'm doing here. You might notice that I use uh, not the 10 uh, unit uh, measurements, I use 11 tiles that gives an excellent water pipe coverage and also some more room in my city. Uh, we already reached the little hamlet, which means we need to install the waste, the landfill to collect garbage. Um, I have uh, connected my uh, little uh, little hamlet to the industrial area with, so to say, the access road. And now I'm making what I would call a surface road, which is uh, uh, actually the faster uh, express route towards the industrial area, which uh, bypasses the traffic uh, coming from the highway. skip a little bit because I'm using the real-time mod and during night time uh, there is no construction work but because uh, for video purposes I have turned off the daylight cycle the day night cycle because else you won't be seeing anything now we already went to worthy village so we get to install the police station and fire station and yeah uh, because I have uh, Spend my money wisely, there is enough. I'm doing the normal things, uh, adjusting budget, uh, reaching 100% again, so they work uh, in, in a most efficient fashion. We already reached Tiny Town and I installed the high school, because yeah, I already anticipated that of course. And that's going to be uh, in between uh, another, uh, another little district of the city which I'm now trying to see how high it should get because the river bank will, uh, will uh, make uh, a copy of the uh, other part of the city impossible, but that's uh, okay. That breaks the symmetry and everything which breaks the symmetry and follows the, the landscape uh, is uh, for me a very nice way to make a make a realistic city. Spending a little bit on the industrial area as well. Skipping ahead a bit and uh, purchasing a new tile so we can expand uh, on the city and uh, relocate uh, the waste uh, drainage so we can also relocate the windmill that cut some money but that gives some building space and it saved money at the beginning of the game which uh, is quite vital at that moment while money is pouring in uh, as we speak as you've seen I did not have to delay any development because uh, of lack of funds I 
I do continue on the same uh, pattern a little bit, but that's going to be just a small part of uh, our city as we already reach Boomtown. Which makes this a really fast introductory video, I just realized. But uh, it also is a nice showcase of uh, less is more. Oh, now the first time we have to wait to get a little bit of money. already see that the symmetry is a little bit broken by uh, placing it uh, somewhat lower follow the riverbank and in that way uh, I have a nice uh, realistic feeling about how the city develops let's see how population is uh, growing steeply here you can see the real-time market work where you have these little steps in population growth because during night time no population accumulates. I'm building a little, uh, how to say, generic, uh, generic lumber industry here. If not only that will help to supply my uh, industrial area next to it, it also, how do you say, will um, hide the hide the pollution from uh, from that side of the industrial area. When I'm placing uh, later on some offices around it, also then the, most of the pollution will be uh, out of sight. It's just some aesthetic uh, idea. Now uh, I'm planning to make making plans for my um, public transport and for that I actually need another surface road going to the new, uh, the new district so the other one will not be uh, taking too much traffic. Some little twists and bends because uh, if everything is completely straight then I think that's very boring. I'm making some room for some bus stations. I actually just use a two-lane road, which is a dead end. Uh, but in that way, uh, the bus stop is uh, not uh, not conflicting with the other traffic. Um, I'm using now a, a system where I have two, or actually three, bus stations here in the in the residential area, and I connect them with lines going uh, through the through the neighborhood and then I'll connect the outer two with the industrial area so people can get to the high school but can also get to, to work and these bus lines help uh, develop the industrial area to a level two. Here I'm having very much trouble selecting the right uh, line but uh, okay. And now I have my bus system complete. Later on this will be, uh, how you say, uh, supported with uh, subway uh, transport stations as well, of course. But then we'll be using the, the, the way that uh, Cities in Motion used to work, the predecessor of this game, where you have uh, bus lines feeding the bigger transport units transportation units and we'll be doing the same thing with uh, bus lines feeding subway lines sub lines subway lines going to uh, stations train stations I mean of course just replacing that because sometimes uh, it uh, it fell dry so to say and a lot of fun uh, making this river when, uh, when creating this map hmm. But you see, it's a nice, fast-flowing uh, uh, current. We reached a busy town. 
this means uh, that'll be uh, the end for this uh, video. We'll uh, reach uh, almost 5,000 uh, people uh, at the end. And uh, that'll be enough for uh, the first showcase. I'll just be zoning uh, my uh, my districts and giving them a name. So they'll look good uh, on the map uh, that I'll show at the end of this uh, video. Which is uh, our town up till now. I give you Port Corinth. Hope to see you next video.